a friend of mine adopted a couple of dogs from an uh, animal shelter. And I came with them there a couple of times and just, you know, hanged out with the dogs and stuff. And uh, I didn't have any plan of getting a dog since I live in an apartment. But um, I told them if they get any, any Rottweilers, they, that they, you know, any condition or whatever, just give me a call. And um, several months later, they gave me a phone call at 8 o'clock in the morning. And they said that the, the night before they got two dogs, a uh, male and a female, and um, told me to come down in the morning to have a look. And uh, I was there, checked them out. And uh, Gorm was pretty skinny. And with the description pretty skinny, it was skin and bones. And he was sitting in a corner because he couldn't walk. His legs was uh, pretty messed up. And um, they told me that they, they didn't have any big um, hopes and stuff for him, but uh, if I wanted to try, take him home. So I took Gorm home. Um, they wanted me to take both of them, but uh, one was enough. We tried to set up an interview with the pet shop owner where Odvar got Gorm, but due to legal circumstances and the fear of losing his license, he had to decline. We came to the veterinary station at the Polo Club and uh, they examined him and did x-ray and uh, the vet was pretty uh, positive to, uh, to get him back on his, on his legs again. So uh, a couple of days later, um, they prepared him for operation uh, in the morning. And uh, I was supposed to come back in the evening to pick him up. And um, they called me after a couple of hours and uh, I said, your dog is singing. He was sitting there in his little cage screaming and shouting. <laughs> so uh, I came a bit earlier to pick him up. But uh, come here. That was no problem. So he was on the couch, he was in the bed at home and uh, just relaxing. And um, it took, I think, 14 or 15 days. And uh, we had one more schedule for, for the other leg. Stay here. So uh, we went back for second surgery and uh, that also went well. And uh, since then, He's been exercising and uh, we go to the beach uh, early in the morning or uh, it's actually late at night, or whatever you call it, when there's no people. In the beginning he was, uh, he was afraid of going out into the water, but now he likes it. So slowly and slowly he um, starts to get his, get his muscles up in his back legs. And, um, yeah, that's good. and he's just a happy guy. But um, you know, so much of this stuff could have been avoided. They cut his ears off and um, the mistreatment. I'm not gonna point at special people who's doing uh, certain stuff against dogs, but um, dog fights and all this stupid shit. Yeah, you, you, you earn some money on it, but uh, for what? It's, it's wrong. People should be more educated. Yeah, I love you too, buddy. <laughs> and I mean, this, this guy, he didn't want to fight. He didn't want to do anything um, nasty. The only, uh, the only aggressive stuff with this dog is he hates cats. But um, that's the only thing. One of the reasons for him to recover so fast is because uh, yeah, he's, we're doing some commercial here now for, for good doggy food and uh, Gourmet actually likes uh, raw meat. That was one of the, the first things that um, he started eating when he, when he came home. And uh, I don't know, easy, easy to swallow or something or uh, he recognized some uh, cat taste in the meat. But. Um, the first night he came home, we went out for a, for a little walk 
and uh, there's a supermarket close to uh, close to my house. And the shop manager there, he came out and uh, he was very very fond of the dog immediately. So he sat down on his on his knees and started hugging the dog and just being polite to the dog. And um, I was asking him for this. Um, pieces of meat, you know, when they, when they uh, cut up the, the nice steaks and stuff, all the pieces, the, the leftovers. And uh, basically every day I've been going down there and he's giving me around two, three kilos of meat. And um, well, I have pictures before and I have pictures from now and you can compare those and you'll see how the, how the dog have been been growing and starting to look like a normal dog. Gorm has, um, he's a very afraid of tight spots and you know, small places. Um, I bought this um, small cage to put him in so he, he wasn't going to be running around after the operation. And um, that was a big problem. He didn't want to go into it. And uh, when I did research about the dog and what happened to him before uh, he came to me, uh, he was basically locked up in a small cage. And that was his life. They took him out, trying to uh, make him into a fighting dog. And um, since that didn't work, he spent his time in a cage. And I mean, as any animal or person or whatever who gets locked up in a small, tight space, they either get nuts or um, something else. And he became something else. He's a great family dog. And he loves kids for breakfast, for lunch, evening dinner. Everybody thinks that because he's a Rottweiler, that um, he's born mean. But, you know, it's like people. No one's born mean, well, except me. But um, it's, everything is what you, what you make the dog into. Come here. And I see that a lot here, like when I go to the elevators and stuff. How people react when they see a dog. You know, they, they, they crawl up in a corner of the of the elevator and they go, "Is the dog dangerous?" The usual answer is like, "No, no, no. He's he's fine." People have, I don't know, some 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 stupid ideas just because the dog is black and he's big that he's gonna eat them. My neighbors are very uh, very fond of Norm and. Um, they come several times a week and, and ask uh, if they can babysit him or uh, if they can take him for a walk or if they you know, can go to the desert with him. And I said, yeah, you, you can try. Um, there's a couple of people, very, very close friends of mine, that can actually take the dog out from the apartment. Otherwise, it's like um, putting the handbrake in a, in a truck. He doesn't want to go anywhere nowhere and um, that's in, in general speaking it's pretty pretty good because I don't want to have a social dog but in the meantime I we're living in Dubai I don't want to have problems uh, with the system here or with the, with the law so you have to be pretty straight what you teach your dog and um, lots of people have been asking how, how his mentality has become because of the way he, uh, he grew up. And I mean, training a dog, you, you start training them when, when you get them home. Normally in, in Europe, um, the, um, the system, of the, the, the kennel system, says that you're not allowed to, to buy a dog until it's like eight weeks old. That's when you're allowed to take it from its mother. Um, 
that's when you start putting your your um, the foundation of the dog's mind. Especially with Gorm, um, when I took him home, it was like he was afraid of everything. And there's socializing and socializing. You want to have a dog that actually um, doesn't care about the environment. You can go into an elevator, there's 10 people standing there from different nationalities and stuff. And you still don't want the dog to, to react on them. And um, I think I had pretty good, good training on the dog where we live. And um, the way that he's evolving with, with just general people and everywhere I take him. Uh, since he has this, this yellow tag that you get from the government here when, uh, when your dog is vaccinated and registered in, in your name, uh, he's been coming with me basically everywhere. In the location this documentary was filmed in, and around the world, dog fighting is one of the most gruesome blood sports that takes place. For some dogs, they get lucky enough to survive their fights until they retire. But for others, like Gorm, there are worse things than dying in the ring. say that animals don't have souls, but I disagree. Audie didn't have to tell me his dog's story, because Gorm's eyes told me everything.